What's up, this is Matt Brown, and in today's video, we are going to do some Wi-Fi hacking. I have two common Netgear Wi-Fi routers over on the desk here, and we have discussed this previously on the channel, but there is a serious flaw in the default password method that these two devices employ. And so, to take a look at that, let's go look at the desk. So I've got two completely different models of Netgear routers, but that are kind of from the same generation. I don't think Netgear does this anymore. I sure as heck hope not. But two totally different devices. This is an old, like, you know, wireless N. This is wireless AC uh, routers. And on this sticker over here, I will try to show you uh, that it displays what the default password and SSID for this device is. So we see Netgear 27 and Daily Planet 317. Like, okay, it's like, it's obviously made out of dictionary words and a number, but maybe it couldn't be that bad, right? Well, let's look at another device and we should notice, we should notice a pattern. So Netgear, this is, this is a lot harder to get into focus on the camera, but this says Netgear 74, now we're in focus. Coming over here to the password, Witty Daisy 503 So, if you can't help but noticing, there, there seems to be a little bit of a pattern. So I've, I've written over here on the text file just for convenience, the SSIDs and passwords of the two routers in question that I have. And so, I'm not the first person to notice this, definitely not. Um, I will post this repository uh, that points this out. I don't even know if this repository is uh, the, where the original research on this came, but I've uh, consolidated some of that research on these Netgear Wi-Fi routers in this repository. What people have pointed out is that this is clearly follows the pattern of an adjective, a noun, and then a three-digit number. and the combination of that with a very identifiable SSID of all caps, Netgear, and then two numbers, those two things together make this ripe for uh, attackers to target all of these, you know, Netgear plus two number networks with some sort of a dictionary password attack against this password scheme. And the thing about an attack like that, uh, like that is that it will always get better. It will never get harder for the attackers, right? As GPU prices uh, decrease for a given uh, set of hardware capability, uh, which it always will, it um, is always gonna get easier for an attacker to perform an attack like this. And so we're gonna demonstrate what can be done, uh, I don't even have the latest gen hardware, but a decent GPU, and I only have one GPU, we will demonstrate what we can do against these Netgear router passwords. So, in this repository, what I have, uh, the files you'll see here are a set of uh, 5,000 English adjectives, and a list of 10,000 English nouns. And then there's this Python script, because what I don't wanna do, and uh, for reasons we will discuss in a little bit, I had to combine the list of nouns with a list of numbers. And this file, I will hop over to the system that I have my GPU attached to, is about 106 meg, and I did not wanna put that in a Git repository. So this file, which is important uh, for the operation of this brute force attack, is not actually in the repository. What is in the repository is this Python script, which uses the nouns file to generate our nouns-numbers file. So just so you know, that's what the Python script does, and it walks, the, walks it through. You just, I mean, you just have to have Python installed, and you run it, and then it will create this file for you. Pretty simple. Then let's let's do some Wi-Fi, some standard Wi-Fi hacking stuff. So the first thing we want to do is to be able to efficiently discover routers that are potentially vulnerable. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this arrow dump command uh, along with 
the alpha card and I will swap back really quick just to show you. Uh, this is uh, my alpha USB wireless card. It supports packet injection on Linux, which is important for a part of the attack that we'll do in this video. Uh, and we'll, we'll discuss that in a little bit, but just wanted to show that and back to the screen. So uh, in these commands, these are, these are examples. Uh, I, I kind of have a pre ready to go set list of my commands because uh, I run on Arch Linux and it's not going to give me a nice WLAN zero interface name. I'm sure there's a way to do that, but I just use whatever it gives me. So what this command is going to do is it's going to perform a ESSID regex uh, where it filters out the access points that it shows us that it's scanning for to this set. And so this is, if you're familiar with regex, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look for an SSID with Netgear and then specifically two numbers. That's what that regex stands for. So we're going to hop over into my terminal here. And like I said, I have a slightly different set of commands. Mostly it is just for this, uh, just for my convenience because I have this insanely long named wireless interface. So when I go ahead and target that SSID scheme, I will see that I see two routers. So we see Netgear 27. And the other thing we want to note at this point, what's really important at this step, is we identify the SSID and we identify the channel that it is running on. So, because, and then we do it for both of those. And so now I'm going to quit out of there and you can still see those up there. So now I'm going to run a slightly augmented version of that arrow dump command. And I'll leave this up here before I hit enter because it's going to make the rest of it go away. But the key things we're doing is here we're specifically targeting in. We're not doing the regex filter anymore. We're specifically targeting Netgear 27. We'll do the same for the other access point in a second. We're going to name a file Netgear 27. And uh, before I keep going, I'm just going to make sure I've deleted the current files in that directory. Yes, I have. And I'm going to set the output, for, output format to cap. It's effectively a PCAP file. And I'm setting the channel to 10. So I want to lock the channel that it is operating on to channel 10 because at this moment I am targeting this network. I know this network operates on channel 10. And what I don't want to have happen is for the channel hopping that is the default activity that AeroDump does where it rapidly switches between all the possible channels. I don't want that to happen because of the next part of the attack that I'm going to do will not be reliable if I'm hopping between channels all the time. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate by having my phone connected. Oh, good. OK, it's connected. So here we see that there is one station. That's, that's just a fancy word for client in the Wi-Fi world. There's a station, a client, connected to the access point. And again, we see the corresponding MAC addresses for the access point here, and that it is the Netgear 27 network, and this is the client that is connected to it. So that is really important. So that client is connected, and then what we want to do is we want to briefly knock that client offline and allow them to reconnect. And then what we're going to look for up here right over here is it's going to say WP, WPA handshake. It's going to capture that the initial authentication of the station to the access point. And that's what we need to perform a Wi-Fi cracking attack with uh, WPA2. So we're going to run this command and this should knock my phone offline briefly causing it to re-authenticate and we will Run that command and give it some time. Also, my phone might try to like just swap over to another network. So I'm going to just monitor and make sure that doesn't happen. We'll de-auth again. It totally is trying to hop to another network. There we go. 
so it captured that WPA handshake. Now I can control C, I can quit out of that program. And now this cat file will have successfully captured that WPA handshake, which we can pull out of that uh, at a later time. So now we're going to do the same thing very fast for our other network. I'm going to start capturing. Again, here we've switched our, our channel lock to be on channel one because that's where we know Netgear 74 is running. And I'm going to just for convenience, paste in my command. Now the only thing we've changed in this command from the previous uh, error replay command is the client. Uh, oh, no, that's wrong. No, the client's the same. It's the access point. The access point Mac is different, differs. So we run that command. And we have a handshake. So it, it re-authenticates back onto the network and we capture that handshake. So now, these two files contain that four-way handshake that we need to be able to crack the Wi-Fi password. So what I'm going to do now, so this was on the system that has my USB wireless card, but I actually have a different system uh, for various reasons that actually has my, uh, my most powerful GPU attached to it. So I'm actually going to go ahead and SCP these files over to my my system that's called GPU to a certain folder that we have right here and we should now see two new files awesome so now what we need to do uh, I'll pop back over to the repo here so we just we just ran a lot of these commands right here uh, again I just wanted to paste them for convenience but this should be a good guide if you want to recreate what we've done here now what we need to do so hashcat in order to crack Wi-Fi passwords, Hashcat wants them in a certain format that is not the same format that AeroDump outputs, unfortunately. So we have to use this tool to basically convert from these two different formats. And so that is what I'm going to do over here on this system. So right here, we are going to run the HCX PCAP NG tool. And uh, the file that it's going to output to is going to be called Netgear 27. And uh, this is the input file. So we run it. It says a bunch of stuff. And then we're going to do the same exact thing for our other access point. And now we have these two new files here. And I'll show you what one looks like. This is, uh, it just contains all the information needed to crack the Wi-Fi password in the specific format that Hashcat wants it to be in. And uh, one nice thing about this format is we can combine, since we're trying to, uh, in this demo, we're trying to crack both of these networks, we're actually gonna just cat those files together, uh, concatenate them, and write them to a new file, let's we'll call it combo, and this is just gonna contain both of them so we can crack them both at one time one command run of hashcat so with that we're now ready to run our hashcat command and we are running it in so dash a is the mode of attack that hashcat performs and we are doing a combination attack there are a bunch of reasons why i'm doing this and they're mainly because I don't want to have a word list that is, you know, hundreds of gigabytes. Actually, Hashcat will choke on a word list that is that large. And that is how large the word list would be to contain all the combinations that I'm going to attempt against these Wi-Fi passwords. So what I've done, again, that Python script generates all of the different combinations of nouns and numbers and then we pass in the English adjectives, which is the first segment. So we have the first and then the second and the third segment in this file. Because a hashcat combination attack only supports a combination of two word lists, not three, not four, only two. And so that's how we're going to perform this uh, attack. So I'm going to hop over to my GPU system here and we will start our attack again on that combination 
uh, with the adjectives and then the nouns numbers. So, and then we can see, we can, we can hit enter in Hashcat here and we can get an idea of how long this is going to take us. And this attack, uh, it's telling me it's going to take about nine days. Okay, that's actually, hang on, it should give me a more accurate. Well, my GPU must be choking right now because usually it, it says it's only gonna take four and a half days. Wow, okay, well, eight days, four and a half days. That might seem like a long time, but actually to attack passwords like this, that is not that unreasonable. An attacker would be able to capture these wireless credentials out you know, next to the access point and then is able to perform this, this cracking work in an offline manner, right? They don't have to be near the Wi-Fi router to do that. That's an important caveat to uh, people who aren't familiar with Wi-Fi cracking. Uh, you, you gather the information. So all, 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 all the commands we did with arrow dump and air replay, you have to do those when you're next to the Wi-Fi router. But this thing, I can just let this run and I can go to sleep and then in eight days and 18 hours, again, I've been benchmarking this a few times and every time before it said it was like four days. There must be something else running on my GPU. Um, but that is a fairly reasonable amount of time to crack a password. And so an attacker would be able to, you know, just set it and forget it on their, on their GPU rig. And again, this is just one GPU that is attached to here. Um, if you're if you're interested in uh, in this repository, I actually have the uh, the benchmarking information here. Uh, I'm running on a 2080 Ti, and I can get about you know 125 hundred or that excuse me 125,000 hashes per second in that specific hashcat mode. And again. The math that I did before takes it out to about four and a half days. And so, but that's with one GPU and this is a couple generations behind now. So a modern GPU, if you have a few of them in a, ha in, in a cracking rig, you could get this down to a day, no problem. That would be realistic. So to prove, uh, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna record this video for another eight days. So to prove that we are able to perform uh, this attack, I'm going to prove that because I, instead of the normal nouns and numbers list, I have this short nouns and numbers list that contains the ending and I can uh, prove that this value is actually in my big file like so. So those, the, so these are in this large file, right? To do every combination, it, it's going to take, you know, four to nine days, uh, but we're going to run it really fast because we're going to replace our hashcat command with this short nouns numbers list. And when we do that, we should pop these passwords really fast. And there we go. It has successfully found both of those passwords, which would now grant an attacker access to that network. And once you get on a, on a user's local network, uh, there's all sorts of new attack vectors that would open up to the attacker. They could see if the user has properly, you know, changed the password to the administrative panel on the router. They could start trying to do man in the middle attacks on people on the local network with art poisoning all sorts of possibilities. And it's all because Netgear thought that this was a good idea. And as Mora's law marches on, uh, a password scheme like this becomes less and less effective over time. And hackers can take advantage of that. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more of this Wi-Fi hacking content, I've done a few videos on those. Um, be sure to leave a comment and like the video. Let me know what kind of videos you want me to do in the future and
Have a great day.